In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome, my dear friends in Christ. Bienvenido a todos. We heard those beautiful words from the anaphon for today's Mass. Rejoice, Jerusalem, and all who love her. Be joyful, all who were in mourning. By coincidence, uh, the motto for my time as bishop, as you can see on my coat of arms, is rejoicing in hope, taken from Romans 12:12. 12, 12. Rejoice in hope, be patient under trial, persevere in prayer. On the fourth Sunday of Lent, the church gives us that special message and gives us reasons for joy and hope in our liturgy while life today may seem so bleak. Well, in today's Mass, I pray for everybody in our diocese, uh, all who are suffering, uh, all in the world in a special way for all our priests, all priests serving in our diocese today on this day of prayer for priests. And I personally thank the Lord for 50 years as a priest, which I uh, officially celebrated yesterday on March 21st. I was ordained a priest in 1970 by Bishop Paul Tanner in my hometown of Faustoria, Ohio, at St. Wendland Catholic Church. And I was ordained for the Diocese of St. Augustine, Florida, where I served for 29 years before becoming bishop in Charleston in 1999 and here in 2007. The chalice I'm using for today's Mass once belonged to my great uncle, Father Benjamin Ald, who was a precious blood father. It was passed by him on to my uncle, Father Clement Ald, also a precious blood father, who eventually passed it on to me. So I celebrate with that a chalice today. Uh, Father Benjamin uh, had that chalice in his possession from October 25th, 1910 onward, so it's 110 years old. So I pray for my uncle, uh, my great uncle, all of you today with this chalice and all the priests who serve in our diocese in very difficult situations. The crozier I used for this Mass belonged to Bishop Joseph Bath, the first bishop of the Diocese of Birmingham. So my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way. Grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, there is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, there, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers and from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The Word of the Lord. spread 
spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness, rather expose them for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. He spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed 
and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, it is. But others said, no, he just looks like him. He said, I am. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on the Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, he put clay on my eyes and I washed and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, what do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? He said, he is a prophet. They answered and said to him, you were born totally in sin, and are you trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, you have seen him. And the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord. And he worshiped him. The Gospel of the Lord. Welcome, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. You can see we are keeping a proper social distancing here with a virtually empty cathedral, but a large audience of participants in this Holy Mass, thanks to my diocesan staff and the people helping us on behalf of Father Jerbik, Father Ward, Deacons of Caucus, our seminarian servers, other servers, our wonderful choir members who took time out to be with us today. Uh, I welcome all of you, my dear friends and brothers and sisters in Christ, mis hermanos y hermanos en Cristo, gracias a todos ustedes, celebrando esta misa santa conmigo. I thank all of you for joining me in this very special Mass. On the fourth Sunday of Lent, as I mentioned, this is called Laetare Sunday. And the church calls us all uh, to rejoice in hope, despite everything we're facing in our society today. This Mass, as you know, is live streamed to you, but thanks to these wonderful technicians helping us connect with you in this extraordinary way, uh, making possible our outreach in the midst of a widespread outbreak of the coronavirus in our country. Indeed, I was hoping I could celebrate this Mass with a full cathedral today, including family members and friends from near and far, because as I mentioned yesterday on March 21st, I celebrated 50 years as a priest. I wanted to celebrate that event with the Diocese of Birmingham in this cathedral uh, represented in large numbers. I value greatly the graces of those 50 years of priesthood 
And I wanted personally to have people close to me for this celebration today. But the reality of the threat of death to people by doing so weighed heavy on my heart. Wisdom and grace enabled me to see that sacrifices made for the benefit of my people were essential. I'd come to know the risk of selfishly wanting to have people close in that kind of setting could make possible a contraction of a life-threatening disease. A close-knit celebration of the Eucharist could indeed be lethal for several people or many in this celebration. Instead, we have to celebrate Holy Mass in a different way from a distance for most of you. And I know too that you value that greatest of gifts the Lord has given to the world, the divine presence of Jesus in the most holy Eucharist. And you knew that that would be denied you by a distant celebration of the Eucharist. How many times in 50 years have I had the benefit of celebrating and receiving the Holy Eucharist? I could not have made it 50 years as a priest without the support of the daily celebration of Holy Mass. And so I understand the sadness of those of you who are not able to receive Christ sacramentally in the Eucharist today. But having been a theology professor who taught sacramental theology in a seminary and an actual course on the Holy Eucharist, and also as a bishop. I can assure you that those of you attending this Mass through this live connection can receive many, many graces, even though you are not physically present for this Mass, if you are properly disposed for those graces, and also because of your sincere desire to invite Christ into your life. Since then, you cannot be present due to the current law of the land, preventing large groups from gathering and consequently risking the threat of serious, even terminal illness to other people. God will give you all the graces that you need, and then even more if your heart and your soul is properly disposed. You know, a private mass offered by a priest links us with the universal church in prayer and unites our Catholic community to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to our Blessed Mother, St. Joseph, all the angels, and all the saints. One holy mass offered privately has tremendous spiritual and cosmic cosmic consequences uh, even offered by a priest away from his people. It automatically, because it is a sacrament, links us Catholics together and even more so as a bishop celebrates a Mass as I do today. So I offer this Holy Mass for all of you who are present spiritually with me and spiritually with the Lord Jesus Christ in your homes. And I pray in a special way today for all in the Diocese of Birmingham, for all the priests serving in the Diocese of Birmingham on this special day of prayer for priests. Thank you for joining me in praying for your priest, because the past several years have not been easy ones for our priests for many reasons. And the present spread of the coronavirus makes their service of their people even much harder. Many of them are doing their best to make the Sacrament of Reconciliation available to you in difficult but creative ways. Hooray for them. We know that Lent is a time for greater recourse to the Sacrament of Reconciliation, but here again, all credible medical experts warn us to avoid proximity 
to other people if that is possible, staying at least six feet apart to avoid the risk of contagion. Thank you, my brother priest, for doing your best to be available as you can in ways for this sacrament that cuts down the risk of infection. Help your people avail themselves of this special Lenten sacrament of reconciliation as best you can and as prudently as you can. The sacrament of the anointing of the sick becomes a risk also for priests bringing this healing sacrament to their people. Why do you think 10 priests from the Diocese of Bergamo, Italy died of the coronavirus? There is speculation probably well-founded that many had contracted the disease from blessing people already suffering from it. Five more priest fatalities were registered in the city of Parma, Italy. Other virus-related deaths emerged among priests in Brescia, Cremona, and the northern industrial hub of Milan. The city of Bergamo has a population of 120,000. Its province now is Italy's worst affected with 4,634 infect infections last Friday. Like all other victims, clergymen are buried without ceremony. Priests in our Birmingham diocese who are hospital chaplains are very zealous men, attempting to bring the healing of Christ to their people. We're trying to guide them on how best to answer the plea of suffering people crying out for help from our priest. And so the gospel today <clears throat> describes a man born blind looking to Jesus for help so that he might see Jesus and so that he might see it all. Jesus did not let the hurdle of opposition from Pharisees stop his healing mode of action for the blind man. The key line in today's gospel narratives is this. Now Jesus made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. For the Pharisees, healing on the Sabbath was unnecessary. It was an unnecessary servile work. But for Jesus, healing on the Sabbath was a mandate of charity. And ironically, toward the end of the full reading of today's gospel, Jesus suggests that the Pharisees were really the blind people in this narrative. They were spiritually blind. It was a case of the blind leading the blind. So what would Jesus do to reach out to the seriously ill in our midst today? How would he want to touch them, to be with them, to help them today? through us, his church. Well, I don't believe it's by closing down our churches and locking the doors to prayer. I don't believe it is by stopping the celebration of masses privately for our people. A priest should celebrate mass daily for his people. And we can do as we're doing in this mass today, live stream masses to our people. We can bring the grace of the sacraments, the healing of the sacraments to people in ways that are unique to our situation. The sacramental grace of Jesus can still touch people far away. I believe our diocesan staff and technicians have devised this way for me to reach you today with the gift of the blessing of Jesus, which I impart to everyone who are with us in this Mass. I believe Mother Angelica through EWTN has provided an avenue for you to connect with the sacramental graces of the Church while not being present physically. Use, use the special means of modern communication and any other ways our Church is creatively making available because Jesus wants to touch your mind, your heart, your soul, 
your entire person. And the sacraments are the usual way, and they can be, bring a blessing to you even from afar. But remember, there's one other principle of Catholic sacramental theology that comes into play here, and that is the Latin phrase, Christus non allegatur sacramentus. Christ is not limited in his activity to the sacraments. Jesus can come to us in any way he wants at any time of day or night. The sacraments are the usual and divinely chosen ways Jesus uses to reach out to us, but he can come to anyone anytime spiritually if an individual is open to his coming. Now I want to mention fondly to you one modern day holy young man who knew the power of the sacraments to change lives. He was a young Italian boy who died at the age of 15. He was from Monza near Milan in Italy. He died in 2006 and he, he is from that part of Italy where the coronavirus is taking many lives today. He died before this time. He will be beatified soon. I was in Rome uh, visiting with fellow bishops, our Holy Father, and was at the Congregation for Saints. I mentioned his name, and they said they all lit up because he is a rising star now in Italy. And I asked how his cause was coming, and they said a miracle had just been uh, ratified by the medical staff and had to wait the theological opinion. Well, that theological opinion was uh, it was a verified miracle, and they're setting a date for this young man's beatification. His name is Carlo Acutis, A-C-U-T-I-S. Google that name. From the time this young man made his first communion until he was dying, Carlo went to Mass every day. When he received the Lord in the Eucharist, he did not just take it for granted that Jesus was there, he realized mystically that if he's there, I should be here, and not just once in a while. So he had an extraordinary appreciation of the Holy Eucharist to the point even of developing a web website on Eucharistic miracles, which is still available. While most of his peers never went to Sunday Mass, he went to daily Mass. And the gift of the Holy Eucharist gave him what we might call infused knowledge of the faith. That can happen to you if you went to Mass every day. To the extent that Carlo would say, to always be close to Jesus, that is my life plan. Could we say that about our life plan? And he said, I'm happy to die because I've lived my life without wasting even a minute of it doing things that wouldn't have pleased God. Could we say that about our lives? I wish I could. And he said, our aim in life has to be the infinite, not the finite, because the infinite is our homeland. This is not. He says, we have always been expected in heaven. He knew while he's leaving his friends, his close family members, that he had people up there who were waiting for him to receive him into heaven. Isn't that a wonderful insight of a dying person? And finally, he called the Eucharist my highway to heaven, my fast track to heaven. Catholics, you and I have it. We have it here. And even though we're celebrating with you from afar, you have that blessing from the Eucharist I celebrate, even, even from afar. The Eucharist was Carlo Cutis's fast track to heaven. It is for all Christians, not just Carlo Acutis, soon to be blessed Carlo. So those of you who are tuning in today are probably not among the, the, the group of people that don't frequent Mass. 
regularly, you're probably among those who crave the Holy Eucharist. You wouldn't be live streaming this Mass if you didn't long for the Eucharist. And I laud you for being connected to us today in this unique setting and having, as you do, the desire to get back to Mass in the usual way as soon as the ban on public gatherings is lifted. Maybe many more Catholics will begin to see life after the coronavirus in entirely new perspective, finding their way back to God. We're certainly hoping and praying that such will be the situation soon post coronavirus, because the reality is only about 30% of Catholics attend mass on an average Sunday or Holy Day. Well, bad as the situation is now, this time may be a time of spiritual blessing for humanity, helping us to rediscover how much we truly value and need the Lord's presence in the Most Holy Eucharist. Soon to be blessed, Carlo Cutis, pray for us Catholics who today yearn for the Eucharist as you did. Pray for Catholics who are far, far separated from any care or concern about receiving the Lord of the Eucharist. Pray for our priests who give their lives in service of the Holy Eucharist by celebrating Holy Mass for their people, even from afar, every day of their lives. And thank you, dear people of the Diocese of Birmingham and all joining us from afar for your prayers for me on the 50th anniversary of my ordination as a priest. I'm very grateful for your prayers today and long into the future. May God bless you today and always. Que Dios bendiga todos ustedes, ustedes hoy y siempre. And I have a little prayer which I will have available in Spanish after today's Mass that can be used as your spiritual communion at home is attributed to the servant of God, Raphael Mary Delval. Let us pray. At your feet, O oh my Jesus, I prostrate myself and I offer you the repentance of my contrite heart which is humbled in its nothingness and in your holy presence. I adore you in the sacrament of your love, the ineffable Eucharist. I desire to receive you into the poor dwelling that my heart offers you. While waiting for the happiness of sacramental communion, I wish to possess you in spirit. Come to me, O oh my Jesus, since I, for my part, am coming to you. May your love embrace my whole being in life and in death. I believe in you. I hope in you. I love you. Amen. And let us now express our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, 
for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> Rejoicing in hope, we should always pour forth our prayers to God, but above all, in these days of Lent, we offer to the Lord now more intensely our petitions in the grace that God holds in store for those who trust in Him. For those who are suffering in the current outbreak of sickness, that they might be healed, and for the happy repose of all who have died from this sickness in recent weeks, let us pray to the Lord. For scientists, health professionals, public officials, and all who are serving the common good in this difficult and uncertain time, that they would be filled with wisdom and understanding, let us pray to the Lord. For all priests of the Diocese of Birmingham, that in this difficult time our merciful and loving Father will strengthen them in their ministries and fortify their trust in His goodness and divine providence, let us pray to the Lord that our compassionate Father would touch all affected by the current outbreak in any way with healing and peace. Let us pray to the Lord in thanksgiving for the 50 years of priestly ministry entrusted to Bishop Robert J. Baker. Let us pray to the Lord. World. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the gift of our priest. Through them, we experience your presence in the sacraments. Help our priests to be strong in their vocation. Set their souls on fire with love for your people. Grant them the wisdom, understanding, and strength they need to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. Inspire them with the vision of your kingdom. Give them the words they need to spread the gospel. Allow them to experience joy in their ministry. Help them to become instruments of your divine grace. And we ask this through the intercession of St. Paul and St. John Vianney. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration as we with all the host of angels cry out and without end acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, for the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said a blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection, and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with the patron saints of our Diocese of Birmingham, St. Paul, and St. John Vianney, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you're, you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours 
now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity through Christ our Lord. <clears throat> so I thank Bruce Lud Ludwig, the director of our choir, and our choir members for singing uh, this beautiful hymn, Rejoice in Hope. Uh, it was uh, commissioned by Father Ward to the uh, person who is the artist who wrote it, Timothy Paul Banks, who is here with us today. Um, how beautifully rendered. I'm sure he is uh, most uh, honored by that, as I am by this special uh, tribute you pay on my, 20, my 50th anniversary as a bishop and enable me uh, to join with you uh, in sharing that message that we should always rejoice in hope no matter what the situation of life is in our midst. Rejoice in hope because Jesus is always with us. So may that message be yours today as we go forth from this Holy Mass, and may we translate that message of hope and joy into the world in which we live. Thank you all who made this day and this Holy Mass possible. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down to the blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended, go in peace. Thanks be to God.